Hey, I'm Rita Sornan, President and CEO of the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. Welcome to our first Facebook Question of the Week. We're excited that so many of you replied with your questions about foster care adoption, and we're excited to keep this um, program going. So here's the first question we thought we'd try and answer today, and it comes from Tony Kay, who asked, what are the first steps any parent should take when they're thinking about adopting from foster care? Tony, it's a great question. Um, and we always refer people, whether they call on our 1-800 phone line or, or connect with us via email, or if we're just talking to people at meetings or on the street, a good first source is our Beginner's Guide to Adoption. It's about foster care adoption. It's um, the step-by-step -step guide to um, walking you through the process of what agencies to contact, what is going to be expected of me, how do I get into this process, what can I expect when I'm halfway through, when I'm almost there. So I would encourage first and foremost for folks to go to our website. Um, and if you go to our resource section, you can either download or order a hard copy of our uh, Beginner's Guide to Adoption, a step-by-step -step guide to foster care adoption. So that's a good first step. Uh, next, you're going to have to connect with one of the agencies in your area, whether it's a public or a private agency. And again, the step-by-step -step guide to adoption has a list of a lot of the agencies in all of the 50 states and the District of Columbia that we've worked with and others, just the, the, the general county or state agency. It has their phone number, a contact person, because you need to get connected and go through their individual process. And honestly, it differs depending on the city or the county or the state that you're in. But for the most part, most um, jurisdictions work, require that you fill out an application, um, complete a home study, which is a, a, a pretty intensive study of the safety of your home, and they'll ask some personal questions about your income, your background, your marital status, all of those things that are important to understand, um, is this a safe home for a child to move into. Um, once that home study is completed, or sometimes while you're getting the home study completed, then you sign up for parenting classes um, at the agency, and those are usually a requirement that you have to go through. So those two steps, a home study, which includes a, a background check and uh, the parenting classes then once you've completed those things the agency will begin to work with you to talk about um, what you're wishing and hoping for in an adoptive family and particularly out of foster care is there an age range of a child that you're interested in um, are there are you interested in a sibling group um, all of those kinds of things you need to make sure that you share with the agency so that you get off on the on the on the best foot possible for finding the kind of family that you're thinking about I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's difficult getting through the bureaucratic challenges of a state or county agency. Um, and ideally, all of those steps are there to protect the safety of the child, to make sure that all of the checklists are met, um, and to make sure that this is the best possible match for a child. But sometimes it can be frustrating, or you may not get a phone call answered. Um, we encourage you to be your best, your own best advocate. And the reality is that the challenges that you meet are absolutely worth the end product, and that's a family that's um, created or, or enlarged through foster care adoption. So keep with it. We always have an 800 line open for you here and we can help you with processing any problems that you might meet or any challenges that you might meet or any questions that you just have. And we've got some great experts on staff that can help you with that. Once you've gotten through those stages though and you've begun to um, get matched with a child or you've reached your final adoption stage, the reality is that it's always important no matter what what the effort is to connect with other folks that have gone through similar experiences. So look in your community, um, and we've got some great resources here at the Foundation, for networks of adoptive parents that have gone through the same process that might be experiencing, frankly, some of the challenges that you might experience post-adoption. These children have been through abuse or neglect or abandonment. They've moved m many times frequently, and although they're they're probably as, as excited as you to finally be in a, a, a permanent family. Sometimes some of those challenges resurface as they test their surroundings, as they, as they work to figure out their place in your family. It's important that you're connected to appropriate resources in your community, to other adoptive parents, to information, uh, and to professionals if you need them. So make sure that you access um, our uh, Beginner's Guide to Post-Adoption resources as well. Um, and again, we can get you connected to all of the other resources that might be important. Stick with it. 
it is a process, but it's the most important process that, that could be around, and that's forming a family through foster care adoption. Right now in this country, there are 104,000 children waiting to be adopted, and your interest and your tenacity and your passion for sticking with the process and getting through what can be the most important step of your lifetime is an important one for a child as well. Congratulations. Keep those questions coming. We love all of the questions. We're going to work to answer every one of them on this new addition to our Facebook page.